Hey guys, how's it going? I've been using the iPhone 15 Plus Max here for a bit uh, and trying to find out the minimalistic way of using uh, an SSD on here. Let me show you what I got so far. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna break this. So this is what it looks like when it's all together, right? So I'm running with this Crucial SSD. So let's break this down a little bit. So parts that's needed. So I'll put links down to all the parts in the comments there. So we got this little USB C U or 180, 180 degree adapter, right? It's a little hard to see on there. Let's do that. And then we got a USB C mail to mail. It would be nice to get one of these that are actually USB-C mail to mail on both sides, but I haven't seen one that actually is good for the data rate. I've seen charging ones, but that's not what we want. What we want to still get the max rate through it. I'm running these, these little crucial, I think they're T9s. They came out with a T10, but the T10, I can't, you can't, the current max will not be able to get the th full throughput of the T10. So it's pointless on a Mac at the moment. So the T9s are the better bet. You'll get the most out of it. They're fairly thin. I think they're a lot thinner than some of the like Samsung drives and whatnot. However, with this build out and these parts, I ended up needing to make it thicker. I have a little 3M metal mounting plate on the back, on the bottom, and it works nice with my Magback cases. Because again, this case is a big magnet and it's one of the strongest cases when it comes to the magnets that I've tested. With that said, this sticks right to the back of it without a problem, right? So the idea here, here is you use the little U, click in the bottom, and then you use the, the male C to connect it. Between this metal plate, I also put some double-sided tape. I think this is Gorilla Tape. Uh, I have three layers in there to get about the right thickness. So I ended up having to make this thicker, which is not optimum. Now, again, I would like to find one another one of these 180 adapters that are not as thick. This way I could just have that straight. I don't know if you could see this, but see if I judge it by the light. Yeah. So we could see that it's off a decent, it's off a decent amount if it was just flat. Again, you would still want this mountain plate, but it would be nice just to put it straight on there and not make it so thick. But with that said, we are getting a fast speeds with this. So it goes on like that. And that is our finished product there. Again, it's a little thicker than I would have really liked. Would be more cleaner if it was flat on it. Works great, these drives are good. There's a nice little app that you could test drive speeds with, which is called Disk Test. And if you open it, go in here, you could go uh, connect drive. And my drive, I, my drive is connected in there. And now I could just hit the read and write button and we could see this, the speeds out of this. They're usually in like the 700s, 800s, which is fine for just writing to. You're not editing off these, so I don't think you need something with crazy speeds. I feel like the 800 mark is probably a good good value for the money at this point. Again, if you get the wrong adapters, you're going to kill some of the speed. So make sure they're like 3.1 adapters, so you're not killing that much. Another thing to note is any Thunderbolt drives will not work. So the drive I actually use for for editing on my laptop and stuff is a Thunderbolt drive that I made. It's Thunderbolt 4 and it has it has basically like the same memory they use in the PlayStation 5s, which is a DDR4 SSD in there. And it's great speeds. I get great speeds off the laptop and everything. But the device will not see it. I, I honestly thought it would be backwards compatible. Meaning that, yes, I understand it's Thunderbolt and this isn't working with Thunderbolt, but I thought it would at least see it as a USB drive and get the max USB speeds. But that's not 
the case. It will not see a Thunderbolt device on it. So it has to be USB-C for it to work. What else? I did show on our unboxing, We again, we like these MagBack cases. I did order a MagBack for my wife, uh, which was one in clear and white. This is just an update here. I'm still dealing with them. I mentioned in the video that this white outline here, which is dopey, uh, it'd be nice if it wasn't there, isn't really white. It's more like a sky blue. Uh, I'm going to show, show you here in a minute. So we got the one that came that we initially got. We complained to them and they were very nicely sent us another one to fix the problem. They're saying it's a defect. However, the one we got still has the same problem. And then I'll open it here. Look, as soon as I open it, you could see the color difference, right? This has a blue tint to it. That's not the camera, which is why I'm trying to show it right next to it. I mean, if you're into that blue, that is awesome. But if it's advertised as white, that's a problem here. So I'll, I'll put it right over the box so you can see how much of a white difference that is. My wife has the white phone. So this, and, and we know with the colors of these iPhones this time around, they're very uh, pastel-y or almost like a faded color. Even if this was solid, real white, I'm sure the solid, real white would stand out too, but it wouldn't be that bad. But this being blue, again, I don't know. So the other thing I'm looking on the packaging, right? So the cutout is on the, the cutout is on the left. It's on the left. This is the right side they're showing, right? Again, I don't know why it's white. Now, if you look on the underside is white, right? So I think it's something about maybe the adhesive they're using that changes the, the color to blue. I don't know, but they're sending me another one again, but I'm very, how do you say it? I don't believe they fixed the issue. I think they're just sending one thinking that it's a defect and not really uh, reading the emails. They are e reading emails. I sent them videos. I've sent them, I've sent them photos. I've even gone ahead and put a color checker in the video. So you could see, here you go. Let's go to actual white calibrate card next to it. Again, it's, it was upsetting because I really do like these cases. And the reason I like them is because of how strong that magnet is. I think they're stronger than say the peak design magnets and some of the other ones. I use the magnetic mount in my Tesla, which I have a moment quarter 20 mount that this goes on and any of the other MagSafe mounts actually start falling off when I hit bumps and everything. It feels like it's tight, but when you start hitting a couple of bumps, they seem to fall off. Um, so again, uh, what else can I tell you? This is nice. This is nice to have. Um, it is nice and small. It's compact. You don't have all this wire sticking out of the right hand side. Uh, it's flat it makes it easy to hold. But the one thing I would say is this is nice, but most of the time, if we're recording a video or something, it, you're going to need audio, right? And you're using the, the only jack that you could use for, let's say, a DJI Matt mic or a Rode mic or something like that. So then you really need some kind of powered hub in here. And it, it ends up being this whole big thing to try to get audio on here, too. Even though I have this, I've fall back to it for B-roll stuff, stuff that I don't need audio for. And then, and I end up falling right back to using the internal memory. Again, you probably don't need 60 frames a second if you're just taking videos of people or someone talking. So I'll use the internal for that. I did get a one terabyte iPhone. So I have a little bit of storage in there, not as much as I like, but I could always offload that onto the drive to make more space for more videos. So that's how I've been using it right now. Again, it's comfortable in the hands. People are starting to come out with some 3D printed hand mounts and stuff with, with their own version of everything in there. It'd be nice to see some of the bigger companies. If we could get a camera grip on here that lets you put the drive in there and have a little USB hub 
in there that you could connect other accessories to, like a mic, that would be really nice. Another thing I've seen people do too, rather than use the SSD drives, they're using the little camera cards as well. Those little camera cards would be nice too if you could have that grip with just a little SSD card that you could plug in and take out. That might be better than having a big old SSD on there. I don't know. And you could just keep swapping those cards out. Just use the same card that you have, say, in your Sony A7 IV or something. But it'd be interesting to see what the accessory market starts doing. Um, in these case manufacturers could start making those grips into the cases uh, and then, you know, put all the additional hardware you need in there. Anyway, thanks, guys. This was just a quick video showing uh, what I have so far. Oh, yeah, I'm going to keep thinking of stuff while I'm here. The action button, the button above the volume buttons that you get set to do stuff. I find myself using two different apps, right? I use the Blackmagic app for a video, and then I use the Cinema P3 app for photo. You could use the Cinema P3 also for video, but I find myself going to the Blackmagic a little more for some of the additional features. And basically what I was getting at is the way I have my action button set up is that it will, depending on the orientation of the phone. So if I have the phone vertical like this and press the button, it will open a certain app. If I have the camera vertical like this and press the dot button, it will open another application. So for me, Vertical, if I press the button, will open my video app that I use, which is actually the Blackmagic Cam. And if it's vertical and I press it, it'll open the, the Cinema P3 app, right? So if I do this, hold the button, there's the Cinema app, right? And if I go this way and hold the button, sorry, because I have to hold it like that, now you can see it, it opens. It opened the other app. I finding that the the best use of swapping between the camera modes. Yeah, let me know what you guys are using your action buttons for. I've seen some really crazy things. I don't want to put a whole bunch of more menus inside the menus. It feels it feels dopey to do that. You already have so many buttons everywhere. But for me, I guess the camera stuff is what I'm using more often, and switch being able to switch between what apps I'm using for video versus photo is pretty good. All right, guys, till next time. Later.